On this occasion of the scientific conference with the theme, Harnessing Science and Research for Improved Collaborative Management of Transboundary Resources in the Lake Victoria Basin. Lake Victoria is a defining signature and landmark of our East Africanness. It has been the source of elaborate interlacustrine civilizations with a long history and great achievements. It has also been the source of world-renowned civilizations along the Nile Valley, such as the civilizations of Meroe in Sudan, and of course the famous civilization of Egypt, the pharaohs, and the pyramids. It is a historical icon and a valued heritage to the people of East Africa, and indeed to the people of the world. The East African countries have risen to the challenges and opportunities offered by the Lake Victoria and its basin. We have demonstrated as East Africans the value of joint management of resources and proved that cross-border management of this kind of resources is the most efficient way of managing these resources and bringing about prosperity to the people in the region and to the people of other parts of the world. I would want to emphasize that it is important to accomplish three main objectives in the management of water resources. The first one is political commitment. Countries have to have political commitment in the joint management of resources. The second is management acumen. In order to develop resources of Lake Victoria and its basin, it's not only enough to have political commitment by the countries involved but we have to mobilize to the maximum the management acumen of the region. And this has proved elsewhere in the world that political commitment must be accompanied by management abilities and acumen. And thirdly, in order to realize the benefits of cross-boundary benefits, you need scientific, technical inputs. And it is in this area that today we are here to mobilize our joint scientific know-how to add to the two other conditions of political commitment and the management acumen to make the best out of the Lake Victoria waters and the Lake Victoria Basin. I salute the scientists and the scientific community for applying your know-how and knowledge to the development of this. You are really demonstrating to the world. If you are flying in space and looking at the figure of Africa, there are only three lakes that are visible from space. It's Lake Victoria, 
Lake Tanganyika and Lake Nyanza. The others are just lines. And this is the uniqueness, what we have. And that's why I said Lake Victoria and the lakes we have inherited are the defining characteristics of our East Africanness. Lake Victoria Basin was designated as an area of common economic interest and declared a regional economic growth zone to be developed jointly by the East African Community Partner States, by the Republic of Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, United Republic of Tanzania, and the Republic of Uganda. And now we shall soon include the Republic of Sudan. On the basis of this declaration, partner states have an obligation of ensuring proper management and sustainability of the basin resources for the benefit of the present and future generations. The journey towards saving the Great Lake Victoria and its basin started some years back after the designation of the basin by the Council of Ministers as a regional economic growth zone for East Africa and subsequent ratification of the Protocol for Sustainable Development in 2004, essentially creating an institutional and legal framework for us to be able to manage the shared ecosystem that is Lake Victoria. Along the journey, a lot has been achieved but not without challenges. Water pollution is still rampant. Massive land degradation, wanton deforestation, declining fish stock, fluctuating water levels, and of course infestation by aquatic weed, especially the water hyacinth, coupled with the climate change. The lake, ladies and gentlemen, is bleeding and choking. Partner states working through the Lake Victoria Basin Commission have put measures to address most of the challenges in Lake Victoria Basin, including adoption of a number of transboundary policies and legal uh, instruments such as memorandum of understanding. We have also partnered with a number of development partners, such as the World Bank currently supporting the Lake Victoria Environment Management Project uh, jointly with the CEDA Sweden. The Africa Development Bank, which is supporting the water and sanitation, and also the Maritime and Transport Communication Project. The USID, which is supporting the wash, climate change and biodiversity conservation through the East African community. This year, we do expect to get about 63 million above what we have, purposely targeting maritime transport, integrated water resource management, and climate change within the Lake Victoria Basin from our development partners. Cumulatively, this support shall continue to, continue, shall continue to contribute towards addressing the condition of our God-given gift of Lake Victoria. As the old adage goes, it is wise to look back in order to advance. The Commission has over a decade supported a number of studies and conducted research aimed at supporting sustainable management and development of Lake Victoria. In the next two days, ladies and gentlemen, we shall be reflecting back on the research work that has been done and the experiences gained in the management and development of the Lake Victoria Basin. Over 47 well-researched papers 
and several uh, poster presentation shall be presented by renowned scientists within and outside the basin. Alongside the thematic workshop, we have lined up several exhibitions on various aspects related to sustainable uh, development. Your Excellency, you have just seen what the exhibition uh, entails. Ladies and gentlemen, the 47 papers shall be guided by five key thematic areas critical to sustainable development of the Lake Victoria Basin, namely sustainable watershed management, socioeconomic and governance in relation to natural resource management, water resource management, pollution control and prevention, fisheries resource management and aquaculture, and finally, the future of sustainable development under climate change. It is our anticipation that from discussion along the five themes, we shall be able to de derive comprehensive and practical recommendations and solutions that will not only inform programming and policy formulation at national level, but also inform formulation of future regional and national projects. Of significance to say, though, is that this conference, the findings, the recommendations, lessons learned and experiences shall inform the pathway towards formulation of the third phase of the Lake Victoria Environment Management Project, which is a flagship project of the East African community. No doubt, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the expectations from this conference are huge for all of us, but fortunately, we are all up to the task. allow me to express my profound gratitude and appreciation to the organizers of this conference for inviting me to such an auspicious occasion. And I must say that I had a benefit of listening to what others are doing for our lakes. You are gathering here to strategize how to protect the environment of the Lake Victoria Basin differently and not in terms of business as usual. As a country, we feel highly privileged to be able to organize this event because the sustainability of the Lake Victoria Basin lies at the epitome of our efforts and strategic plans towards achieving collaborative environmental management and improvement of livelihoods. I commend the choice and selection of the theme, Harnessing Science and Research for Improved Collaborative Management of Transboundary Resources in the Lake Victoria Basin. The theme is timely and relevant. The choice of this theme is a clear testimony that you have endeavored to engage differently this year through science re scientific research. I must say that it is heartwarming to see that the two-day conference is graced by renowned stakeholders in the basin, ranging from the development partners, research institutions, universities, non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, public and private institutions, and individual researchers, as well as other private institutions. <coughs> and stakeholders. You have rightly endeavored to come together to discuss, share, and exchange scientific knowledge that will help inform future interventions in the basin. The economic value of Lake Victoria and the entire basin for the riparian states in unparalleled. It is the largest freshwater lake in the equatorial zone and the second largest freshwater lake globally. Together with Lake Nyasa and Lake Tanganyika, they hold 33% of the total volume of the global freshwater. Lake Victoria indeed is a historical icon and is a fundamental to the well-being of many people in East, Afri in East African region. 
It provides the foundation for economic activities and it is a direct source of drinking water for many people in our region. It is therefore our honorable duty to ensure this much needed global resource is protected through the use of all available scientific means for us and our future generation. Hence, the importance of this conference. that are supposed to inform key uh, decision making uh, as we move on. Uh, the next slide shows uh, the ecosystem monitoring and applied research. What was done and what are the, the usefulness. Uh, frame surveys, fish stock assessments uh, were undertaken and the monitoring of forest cover degradation and regeneration was also undertaken and this gave us information on various trends on the key parameters. For example, the forest cover has been found to have increased to 70%, especially the survival rate of the trees planted. Uh, the next thing that we monitored is the, the sediment and nutrient loss. Uh, from the land use in the catchment, especially in the upper catchment of River Nyando, particularly Tinderet, Muhoroni, and, uh, and the Kericho area. So this activity has given us very useful information, and uh, we have discovered that the degradation has really taken place at an alarming rate and especially in Tinderet, which is a very high uh, 
some hilly area in the, in the catchment. We have also been uh, undertaking monitoring and surveillance of uh, water hyacinth in Lake Victoria, uh, particularly on the Kenyan side. And this exercise has revealed that between 2010 to date, the infestation by water hyacinth has increased from about 10,000 hectares to over 15,000 hectares as at October uh, last year. And also, a few emerging uh, submerged, submerged aquatic weeds have also been discovered during that period of uh, monitoring. And then, as a result, we are saying, uh, because of this high magnitude of infestation, we have procured a water harvesting machine that we are going to use to undertake mechanical uh, water harvesting. And maybe in the near future, the infestation level will go down. Uh, this one is a water quality monitor, a water quality laboratory in uh, Kisumu, uh, which was burnt some time back, and uh, it has been rehabilitated and equipped by the project. And this is going to be used to, to test and analyze the parameters that we are talking about in the various monitoring activities uh, which we have been uh, uh, carrying out. And uh, right now, the monitoring on the sediment and the uh, nutrient loss has been analyzed. The, the samples have been analyzed in this particular lab and the results which you will, uh, some of you will hear in that presentation you are coming actually from this lab. And this lab is a very good lab, and we are trying to take it to a higher level, actually to uh, uh, have it accredited to international standards. Uh, under component two, this is where the project has been addressing pollution issues, pollution challenges uh, in the Lake Victoria Basin, and uh, we have done so by providing uh, on-site uh, sanitation services through the exhausters which we have procured and uh, given out to serve the towns which have got no sewage systems. And a, new a new sewage system was constructed because there was none in Homer Bay, an expansion by constructing additional structures in the Kisat sewage system. And those are the, some of the structures that we constructed. Uh, one of them is a sludge digester, the one which is up there, but the lower one is trickling filter. I could not accommodate all, the, all of them here. And the information from Kiwasco, which is managing that uh, facility, is as follows. And we are told that uh, the BOD and COD have respectively improved, as shown in this slide. And even total suspended solids, uh, there is an improvement. And therefore, in the overall performance of the system, we are saying, as a result of that expansion, the capacity of that uh, facility to, to process the sewage has been enhanced. This is now component three. Uh, this is called watershed management, whereby we are rehabilitating four wetlands uh, by preparing four management plans for one for each wetland and doing survey and demarcation and also providing bamboos and indigenous tree seedlings to be planted uh, as a, a means of rehabilitating those uh, wetlands and uh, to compensate the communities uh, for their livelihoods lost when we tell them to stop uh, on encroaching on the wetlands, we have given them, them some uh, livelihoods, 
in the, in the form of beehives so that they can produce honey and get income. We have also given them uh, materials and constructed uh, uh, fish ponds for them so that they can make good use of the, of the wetlands as they continue to conserve and rehabilitate. We have also done bare hills and river banks rehabilitation. You remember degradation has been going on at an alarming rate whereby our hills have been shaved clean. This is an example of a bare hill called Kajulu Hills that we found in the form in the upper photograph after planting it is now in this state in the lower photograph actually it is much better because this photo was taken some uh, few months ago and uh, the river banks have also been rehabilitated quite a number of them where the farming activities were taking place up to the the banks and the finishing and now you can see the consequences. Our rivers are actually drying up because of silting uh, going on. Now I want to uh, talk about the community-driven de development uh, sub projects. In Kenya, we have done around 255 sub projects, and uh, about 60% of them have been completely uh, implemented. And if I can tell you, this is just an example, that photo is just one of the CDDs, and there are 225. The CDDs have really improved the lives of the communities and uh, the, the, the surrounding uh, people of those communities where these uh, sub-projects were uh, implemented. And from our observations and the talking with the, the communities, the livelihoods have really improved. And tree cover, you know, tree planting in Kenya and in this project area has really increased. People are really planting trees. It's like becoming a, a norm. At the same time, as we implement the uh, CDDs, we have been training these groups. Before they started, they were trained. And as they continue implementation, we give them continuous training for purposes of uh, improving their capacity to implement and also for sustainability uh, purposes. We have taken them to study tours abroad and locally. Abroad meaning even in Tanzania. So this has really improved their morale and they are empowered. And they are really, uh, they talk really great. They are not the same as when we started with them. And uh, I'm concluding, Chair, I, our conclusion is that Levem has really recorded impressive achievements. And we think CDD approach has proved to be very attractive and effective in environmental conservation. We also conclude that interventions and investments have not been fully mainstreamed into the institutions. And therefore, their sustainability is still a bit uh, not yet assured.
the open lake was more transparent compared to the inner uh, part of the Gulf. And also if you go to the nitrates, you will find that uh, in the open uh, uh, lake, the mean values are favorable compared to what we see in C2 and C1, the clusters which are in the main Gulf. Uh, this is just the relationship between the primary production level, between the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons. And uh, the relationship indicates that uh, it is uh, inversely uh, proportional uh, in the sense that uh, it is uh, uh, determined by the prey-predator relationship. Uh, the abundance of zooplankton means how the, uh, the, 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 the nutrients are uh, influencing the productivity of the primal level and also the zooplankton now which fits on the, uh, the, the phytoplankton, how they maintain the balance in the water and it was varying from uh, the open waters as you go to the uh, deeper waters. This is... Uh, a correlation, uh, Pearson correlation matrix that uh, shows the relationship between uh, particular parameters. Like for here, if you take the oxygen, there is a scale here. As you go up towards the red, that is now tolerance. And uh, you can see that uh, dissolved oxygen correlates well with some catfish species like Caribbean. Uh, uh, Clarius carepinus, which is more found in the deeper uh, uh, part of the Gulf with low oxygen uh, concentration and with some uh, element of eutrophication. So total phosphates and dissolved oxygen are some of the uh, parameters that influenced the distribution of uh, fish in the lake. The fish samples were taken through trolling uh, all the way from the open and into the deep gulf. So, uh, from the results that we found out, uh, the influence of some parameters like the nitrates and phosphates makes the gulf more polluted. And also this is compounded by the fact that uh, it is shallow and we don't have strong currents that can mix the water from there. And also we realize that uh, Toroland fish species were most common in the Gulf compared to Nile perch, which was open, uh, found mostly in the open waters. So at a management level here, it means that uh, if you want to go for a high value perch, uh, specifically the Nile perch, then you have to invest more, get a motorized boat to go into the deeper waters. Uh, you have to spend more to get that fish. So the pollution, uh, uh, the level of pollution in the Gulf somehow deters the most valued uh, species uh, in the lake. So uh, our recommendations are uh, there's a need for a stronger collaboration between the national government and the county governments. In Kenya we have 48 governments. The national government and 48 county governments. Uh, this is for purposes of uh, awareness creation, especially for the communities uh, who stay in the catchment, for adoption of some of the frameworks that have been developed at a regional level, like we have the Sustainable Land Management Plan, to be domesticated and aligned to the local or county uh, policy uh, programs. There's also need now to uh, maintain regular uh, monitoring to give us a wider understanding of what is changing in the ecosystem and how it is uh, influencing the, the, the fish distribution. And also, uh, since the species diversity has been going down, we are told the Victoria had over 500 species. Now we are just having only three that are of commercial value and also others have uh, disappeared. So there is need now to have an inventory of the current status of the uh, fish uh, diversity in Lake Victoria. And we just selected these uh, uh, 
uh, mostly parameters that are in influencing uh, uh, eutrophication uh, and uh, the basic ones like uh, dissolved oxygen. We also had uh, covered the micro contaminants and uh, those ones from point sources pollution, but that one was uh, uh, is, is, is also a paper for uh, another another journal. Uh, we appreciate the Kenya government uh, through LEVEM for supporting the activity and some of the key institutions that uh, participated in the research, like Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I presented a paper on the effect of degradation on, micro on water quality, and this was a case study that I did in Nyando River Basin in Kenya. I looked at the importance of the catchment, the Lake Victoria catchment in total, and we realized that it is a very important area for the five countries, and because it's an economic zone that is uh, helping to give uh, water for agriculture, use domestic use, industries, and other things, and then is a source of fisheries, and other things that are done within the catchment which require water. Out, out of this, we realized that this place is a place that we also stay, so it gives us shelter. But the other thing is that all waste that are generated, whether it is from domestic industry or agriculture, is actually thrown into this same environment. So this one has elicited a lot of interest, so that we wanted to know what is happening. Now I took a case of Nyando River Basin, which is in Kenya, one of the rivers which drain into Lake Victoria from the Kenyan catchment. The total catchment area of Lake Victoria is almost 193,000 square kilometers. But uh, Kenyan catchment is only 22 percent of this 103,000 square kilometers. However, out of this 22 percent, we discharge from the terrestrial waters going into the lake 42 percent of the total water that comes from the catchment into the lake. So that means that whatever happens in the Kenyan catchment will be very important to this lake because it can affect the lake negatively or positively if it is good. So this is why I took interest. Now I went to Ainomotua, uh, tributaries in Tinderet, where I took two subcatchments or micro catchments, one called Cheberil Kut and another one uh, Kai Matkei. And then the other or two, the other three I took were Nande Hills. One is called Sitoi, the other one Kiboareng, and another one is Kaplelmet. The situation, uh, the reason why I picked this, they are neighboring, the two in uh, Tinder are neighboring, one is highly degraded, the other one is very well conserved because it is flowing from the uh, Tinderet forest where there are no people staying and the only activity outside the forest is tea plantation. The other one which is uh, next to it is actually highly degraded, a lot of farming even up to the river banks, cattle rearing and I realize that these two neighboring areas have the same climatic condition but they are differing in the land use and that the deg degradation levels were different. So from this actually we realize that it takes a long time to reverse a, a degraded or a destroyed catchment because it took a very long time for Kaplalme to come to be at least good again. Though we could see the environment was now good, the tree cover was good, river line was well covered, but the quality took long to respond. Now immediately there was small interference, the quality again changed. So it takes long to rehabilitate a degraded and have a response of water quality, <coughs> but a very short time to spoil this by doing a small thing that interferes with the quality of the catchment. So this is what we learned in Nyando River Basin for these two micro catchments. We are here today in Mwanza to attend a, a scientific conference on Lake Victoria, the research and scientific conference, which obviously intends to come up with uh, solutions to some of the challenges being experienced within the Lake Basin region. As you are aware, of Lake Victoria is a shared resource between the riparian countries of East Africa, and it continues to uh, supporting over 25 million people. However, the lake faces serious challenges. The challenges range from watershed management, uh, pollution control, environmental governance, which poses serious issues both in terms of fisheries development and maritime transport uh, around the lake and around the region. 
the issue of pollution is also a major challenge. And on the part of Kenya, I must say that we are aware of the challenge. We have made several steps to try and address the issue of pollution and sanitation around the lake. One such is to develop the wastewater treatment plant in Kisumu, which is already complete. We have also done sewerage facilities in, uh, in Homa Bay, which are ongoing now. Phase 2 is ongoing with the support of the, the World Bank. We are also undertaking uh, afforestation along, along, along the riparian areas. And we are supporting community development groups to be able to do that. So that the, 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 the forest will act as seal traps to control soil erosion into the lake. So I think as a government uh, of Kenya, we have done quite a lot, but a lot still need to be done, especially the control of water hyacinth, which poses a major challenge to fisheries and with lake transport. Recognizing that the Lake Victoria Basin was designated as a common economic growth zone by the Council of Ministers to be managed in a collaborative manner. Cognizant of the fact that as a transboundary resource, Lake Victoria and its basin continues to face various development and environmental challenges. Oops. Acknowledging that under the Protocol for Sustainable Development of Lake Victoria Basin, the EEC partner states identified and agreed on 14 areas of cooperation under Article 3 of the Protocol. Acknowledging the commitment of, of the states and non-state actors to ensure proper management and sustainably, sustainability of the natural resources for the benefit of present and future generations. Noting that LVMP1 support, supported various studies, ecosystem monitoring and applied research which informed the design of LVMP2, which has been under implementation in selected subcatchments and hotspots within Lake Victoria Basin since the year 2009 in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, and since the year 2012 in Rwanda and Burundi. Despite the tremendous achievements and results generated under LVMP2, various sustainable development challenges and intervention gaps persist, recognizing that since uh, science and uh, research findings from within and outside the basin provide important lessons and recommendations that can all optimally inform sustainable development programming of Lake Victoria Basin. Noting that six development objectives in the Lake Victoria Basin Commission's strategic plan 2016-2021 have been identified to guide interventions kept conceptualizing development programming, resource mobilization, and planning for the basin over the next five years, and acknowledging that it is important that governments, private sector players, development partners, and communities work together for sustainable development of the basin and optimally contribute to achievement of the sustainable development goals targets. Hereby agree and recommend for action by governments, development partners, civil society, private sector, and EEC as appropriate to use the recommendations from this conference to advance the sustainable development agenda for Lake Victoria Basin aligned to the Lake Victoria Basin Commission Strategic Plan 2016-2021, the Sustainable Development Goals, National and Regional Development Visions and Blueprints. Two, refine and upscale the community-based and community-driven approaches for sustainable watershed management, environmental conservation, and livelihood improvement in the basin. Three, promote and invest, invest 
in the development of major value chains as important drivers of green growth in the basin. Four, promote the use of appropriate and affordable agriculture technologies for sustainable watershed management in the Lake Victoria Basin. Five, enhance investment in the promotion of sustainable tourism, biodiversity, and transboundary ecosystems protection in the basin. Six, put in place adequate and innovative measures to conserve ecological and biologically significant areas such as watershed, fish breeding sites, biodiversity hotspots, among others in the basin for posterity. Number seven, development and strengthen, develop and strengthen institutional and technical capacity of Lake Victoria Basin Commission and other regional and national institutions to effectively participate in the collaborative management of transboundary natural resources, ecosystems, and landscapes in Lake Victoria Basin. Promote cross-sectoral collaborations and partnerships for holistic, integrated, and sustainable development in the Lake Victoria Basin. Number nine, sensitize relevant stakeholders at national, regional, and international levels to support and allocate resources to facilitate the implementation of the reviewed and harmonized laws, policies, legislations, regulatory standards, and strategies. Number 10, earmark and promote the transformation of LVBC as a regional knowledge hub for social, economic, and environmental matters on the Lake Victoria Basin. 11. Support and promote the transformation of Lake Victoria Basin Commission as an African center of excellence in integrated water sources and transboundary ecosystem management. 11. 12. Identify and progressively develop pollution prevention and control master plans for all major point sources of pollution within Lake Victoria Basin to effectively guide pollution prevention and control investments. Number 13, intensify and appropriately target the promotion of resource efficient and clean production technologies among small, medium, and large industries and municipalities in, basin, in the basin and adopt uh, uh, res uh, regional uh, uh, efficient cleaner technologies as an industrialization strategy for the basin. We will humbly request you to witness the signing of the secretaries who are with you in the dais. Now I request the report the resolutions to the principal and permanent secretaries for signing. Wimbo, Wimbo, we Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria, Dina Tuhusu Wananchi Wote wa Afrika Mashariki. Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria, Dina Tuhusu Jumuiya Yote Afrika Mashariki. Tanzania, Uganda na Kenya Lina Tuhusu. Rwanda pia na Burundi Lina Tuhusu. Tanzania, Uganda na Kenya lina tuhusu Rwanda pia na Burundi lina tuhusu Tuanishe sayansi na utafiti katika kuboresha Simamizi shirikishi kwa rasili mali za bonde la ziwa Victoria Victoria Tuanishe sayansi na utafiti katika kuboresha Mamizi shirikishi kwa rasili mali za bonde la ziwa Victoria Victoria Ziwa Victoria Ziwa Victoria Nina tuhusu wananchi wote wa Afrika Mashariki Ziwa Victoria Ziwa Victoria Nina tuhusu jumuiya yote Afrika 
mashariki Mm. Shirikiani 